So OpenAI just dropped GPT 4.1. Yes, GPT 4.1. I know you're probably thinking, wait, didn't they just release GPT 4.5? What even is 4.1? And well, here's the thing. Based on the name alone, you'd expect GPT 4.1 to fall somewhere between GPT 4.0 and GPT 4.5, right? I mean, in terms of performance. But surprisingly, it actually outperforms GPT 4.5 in a bunch of areas, like in coding especially, instruction following too, and there are a couple of other things about this model that make this a way bigger release than you probably thought. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so the first thing you need to know about this model is that it is only available in the API. So you're not gonna see this model on the ChatGPT website under the model picker. This is pretty much a release specifically for developers. And it's actually not just one model, it's three. We've got GPT 4.1, GPT 4.1 Mini, and GPT 4.1 Nano. According to OpenAI, these models outperform GPT 4.0 and GPT 4.0 Mini across the board, with major gains in coding and instruction following. They also have larger context windows, supporting up to 1 million tokens of context, and are able to better use that context. So right off the bat, those are some pretty big claims. Although the model does score 55% on SWE Bench Verified, a tough software engineering benchmark, which is really impressive. I believe only Gemini 2.5 Pro and Anthropic's Claude 3.7 Sonnet actually beat that. And keep in mind, those are both reasoning models, unlike 4.1. So when they said major gains in coding, they clearly weren't lying. Also, GPT 4.1 Mini scoring 24% versus GPT 4.0 Mini's 9% is a massive jump. The other area they said there were major gains in was instruction following. And once again, they were not lying. I mean, just look at this demo from their live stream. It's honestly unfortunate that this is an API only release because man, I would love to try out these models. Um, so those are coding benchmarks, but there's also kind of the intangibles of when you're using a model. You know, when you're creating a front end, is it functional? Is it beautiful? Does it nail the mark? And so for that, we have uh, a little example of a flashcard app I've been making. You're learning Hindi. Yeah, working on it. Uh, and so I've got, uh, you know, a prompt here. It's pretty complicated. I'm asking for this app pretty specifically. I want a nice 3D animation when you click on the flashcard. Um, and so when I give this prompt to GPT-40, this is what I get. Um, it follows some of the instructions and, and some of the app is functional, um, but you know, we really trained GPT-4.1 to do better. And that model, you can see it looks Ooh. way better. It's discovered colors. Uh, <laughs> it can also do the 3D animation. Um, so we think you're really gonna like this improvement to front end coding. And this was just based on that prompt that you gave it? Just one prompt and you get back an entire working application. Pretty cool. Now, another thing that was really surprising about this release, these models can support up to a 1 million token context window. This is actually the first time OpenAI has released a model with context this long. Their previous highest was 128k tokens, so this is a massive jump. To be fair though, this is not state of the art or anything. I mean, just last week, Meta dropped Llama 4 Scout with a 10 million token context length. And Gemini 2.5 Pro has a 2 million token context length, but 1 million is still more than enough for most use cases. Developers will definitely love this too. And as you can see, the models get a perfect score on the needle in the haystack test, meaning they can reliably find specific information buried deep in a massive chunk of text, even at the tail end of a million token prompt. To give you a sense of just how accurate and contextually aware these models actually are, here's another demo where they showcase the model scanning a massive document filled with code and correctly spotting the one line that's different from the rest. Take a look. So to test the log file that I'm about to upload, um, that file is NASA's server request response log file from 1995 August. Let me show you that you just, file. You just have this file lying around? Yeah. that's. Don't, you don't? <laughs> I actually, I prefer the 94. Oh, yeah. uh, the 94 is a great version. That's a good one, <laughs> yeah. So in this log file, you can see the client name in the left that made the request to NASA servers. You see the timestamp, the resource that was accessed, and the HTTP response code. This is a long file that contains a lot of log lines. And you can see on the left that this is about 450,000 tokens of uh, content here. Nice, so you just couldn't use this with our past models. Yeah, this wasn't possible. So let's try uploading this file. 
Now what I've done is I've snuck in a line that is not actually an HTTP request response. Let's see if it can find it. Very sneaky of you. Okay, so it's a little needle in the haystack, except in this case, you don't even tell it what the needle looks like. It's just figure out what's different and tell me. Exactly, so it's gonna sift through the whole file, do some pattern matching to see how all the log lines look like, and then try to see if there's one that does not look like the others. Okay. Oh, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, there is a line that it has spit out that does not look like an HTTP request line to me. It does not. Okay. Uh, let's see if this line is indeed in the log file that we uploaded. I'm gonna copy this keyword. Nice, yeah. there it is. Great, so it was able to find this line that has been snuck in into this deep 450,000 token log file that is like very hard to find, so it did pretty well. Now, along with this release, OpenAI also introduced a brand new benchmark called OpenAI MRCR, short for multi-round co-reference, to push these models even further on complex information retrieval. They mention that few real-world tasks are as straightforward as retrieving a single, obvious needle answer. And so, OpenAI MRCR tests the model's ability to find and disambiguate between multiple needles well hidden in context. Here are the results on two needle accuracy. So when there are two needles in the haystack that the models need to retrieve, we see a heavy drop off for pretty much all models up into 128K tokens. And then they basically flatten out or slowly decline in accuracy. Jumping straight to eighth needles, we see kind of the same thing. The models drop off hard until about 128K tokens, and then they start to flatten out. 4.1 nano, which is the smallest version, actually falls off pretty hard though towards the tail end of those 1 million tokens. Whereas 4.1 mini, on the other hand, actually starts to do better. So all this to say, the 1 million token context window is not just for show, it's actually effective to a certain extent. Now finally, if we look at traditional benchmarks like the AMI, a challenging math benchmark, the GPQA, which consists of PhD level science questions, and the MMLU, GPT-4.1 holds its own. It's pretty much on par with GPT-4.5 and in some cases, it actually does better, like on the AMI and the multilingual MMLU. What's even more surprising though, is that GPT-4.1 mini basically matches the larger GPT-4.1, and GPT-4.1 nano, the smallest of the bunch, actually beats GPT-4.0 on both AMI and GPQA. So yeah, while I usually don't look into the benchmarks too much, because they don't always tell the full story, these models clearly seem to be the real deal. All right, now we covered the major points of this release. These models are clearly very good at coding, as we saw from GBT 4.1 score of 55% on Sweebench Verified, which is the highest score of a non-reasoning model. They're also really good at instruction following, as we saw from that earlier demo, and their context window is the largest of any available OpenAI model, at 1 million tokens. Of course, they're also crushing traditional benchmarks, outperforming GPT-4.0 across the board, and matching or slightly surpassing GPT-4.5. But there's one more piece we haven't talked about yet, and it's what turns this model from just impressive into a developer's wet dream, and that is the pricing. These models are extremely cheap considering their performance, especially 4.1 nano, which comes in at just 10 cents per million input tokens and 40 cents per million output tokens. That is ridiculously cheap. GBT 4.1 is also noticeably cheaper than GBT 4.0, and of course, GBT 4.5, which was already on the expensive side. On top of the great pricing, these models also have much lower latency, meaning they're much faster. OpenAI points out that GBT 4.1 mini specifically matches or exceeds GBT 4.0 in intelligence evals, while reducing latency by nearly half and reducing cost by 83%. So these GBT 4.1 models are faster, smarter, cheaper, and just overall the better option. I mean, think about the startups building on top of GBT 4.0. They can now switch it out for 4.1 mini and get basically the same performance with a massive price decrease and the relatively large speed increase. This is huge for developers. Now, again, unfortunately these models are only available through the API, but I honestly think people are downplaying this release a bit. Because, I mean, this release essentially proves that we're not hitting a wall. Despite GBT 4.5's underwhelming performance, 
4.1, 4.1 mini, and 4.1 nano show that OpenAI has been quietly optimizing behind the scenes. We're still getting models that are faster, cheaper, and in some cases smarter than 4.0 and even 4.5 without needing a flashy name. So I think the main takeaway here is that there's still a ton of improvement to be made on making these models more efficient. OpenAI proved that this week with their release of 4.1, and that's what makes this release bigger than people realize. Also, if you're wondering what's going to happen with GPT 4.5, since we basically now have models that are better than it, more or less, and just much cheaper and faster, well, it's actually going to be going away. OpenAI states, we will also begin deprecating GPT 4.5 preview in the API, as GPT 4.1 offers improved or similar performance on many key capabilities at much lower cost and latency. GPT 4.5 preview will be turned off in three months on July 14th, 2025. So these are some pretty interesting times right now for OpenAI. They're kind of all over the place with the naming of their models, but they continue to surprise the world with these shock drops. I mean, everyone was expecting the full O3, or maybe even O4 Mini this week. But no, we got GPT 4.1, when GPT 4.5 is already a thing. I still expect to see O3 and O4 Mini very soon, possibly even this week. And some of the rumors I've been hearing about these models are pretty insane. One of them being that these models are already aiding in real world scientific discovery. But I mean, who knows? At the end of the day, these are just rumors, so we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, that was the GPT 4.1 family of models. Definitely a massive release for developers, and a clear sign for everyone else that these models are only getting cheaper, faster, and way more capable. Let me know what you're most excited for from OpenAI next though. Is it the full O3 model, O4 mini, or are you holding out for GPT 5, which is still a few months away? Either way, things are clearly starting to heat up in the AI space, and I expect another wild year. If you want to stay ahead of it all, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.